Hello, my name is Dr. Bagley. Thank you very much for joining me. Okay, so everyone is logged in. And so today we're going to do a, revent, uh, a review, I'm sorry, <laughs> a review of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to talk a little bit more in detail because there was some confusion and somebody wants, uh, quite a few people wanted me to ex uh, help them understand a little bit more when it comes to the Spirit, the Lord, and God. And so that won't be no problem. So let's go ahead and get started. If you do have any questions, again, let me know down below. There's, um, or it might be on your side, <laughs> but uh, either way, uh, just let me know. And uh, if, as we go through this, I'll uh, try to explain a little bit more in detail so we can have a better understanding. And then next uh, lecture, we'll get into a spirit, um, salvation uh, lecture. Uh, so today, we're just going to take a little break and we're going to review 1 Corinthians by defining what does it mean by the gifts of the Spirit, administrations of the same Lord, and uh, the uh, operations of the same God. All right, so let me go ahead and put on these glasses so I can see. And we are going to share, let's share screen two. Boom. All right. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 12, again, the verse 4, there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit, there are diversities of administration by the same Lord, <coughs> excuse me, and then uh, there are diversities of operations by the same God, which worketh uh, all in all. All right, so we know there is God who is all in all. We know there's a different type of Lord because it's an administration, and then there is the same spirit. How does that work? Because in context, Paul is writing it as if it's a multiple of things, three, three levels, but one of each. And so I want to define it a little bit more than uh, the scripture. All right, so let's go into Genesis, and we'll take it from there. Genesis chapter one and let's just do it that way all right so in the beginning and again this is just a review so let me know if i'm catching you're catching up or if you need a little bit more on something in the beginning god created god did this god did everything god did everything until when it came to the six uh the sixth thing that came through and God said, uh, let us, in verse 26, make man in our image after our likeness. And so when it comes to man, okay, you have man and mankind in our image. So there is a direct relations in if I was to see a Lord or see God or see something like that, then that image will not frighten me. And, and okay, and in this, that likeness, it, it, it'll also attract me because there is something about the Lord of God and that, that context um, that will uh, draw me to them that to make me want to learn from there. Okay, so in chapter one, you and we know this in chapter two, so here's two, the seventh day, God rested. And then now we have it in verse four, Moses is saying the generations of the Lord, how of the heavens and earth. Now there's a plural heavens. So there's different heavens and the same earth. And now being introduced to us is the Lord God. So one thing I really want you to understand, and that is this interpretation of the King James Version is not a wrong interpretation. They know what they're interpreting from the original writings for them to say God versus Lord God versus Lord, okay? They know what, what it is. They're just not expressing it enough for us in the King James Version to understand its context. So this is where I'm going to break it down for you guys. So God did everything, rested on the seventh day. This now is the generations of the Lord God who made man in this context. And we know man is mankind. We know to dress it and keep it. 
So the Lord God took and dressed it and keep it and so on. And man being naked and so on because of the, the thing. And the serpent of the field. Now, again, Moses, when Moses is saying serpent, he is saying serpent in its character, not in its form. Okay. The form is in our, their likeness, our likeness and our image. So when woman is talking to the serpent, she's talking to something she's familiar with in the likeness and has an attraction to, uh, I mean, has a likeness in our image, in the image and has the tra attraction to the likeness. And the likeness with the Lord uh, and the woman and serpent, that is the serpent has wisdom that she wasn't getting from the man, okay, Adam. Okay, so that's that's a different subject. Lord God, Lord God did this, Lord God did that, and, and drove the man, uh, drove out the man, the place in the eating. Okay, so we have God, we have now Lord God. Lord God actually took what God said and applied it. Okay, so I want you to understand this position. God said it, the Lord God applied it. Now, when chapter 2 and verse 24, the Lord God, right here, kicked out man and woman from the Garden of Eden and made sure they couldn't come back. Okay, if you understand this position in the next chapter, Adam, verse 1, verse one and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I gotten a man from the Lord, not Lord God, and not God. Cain came from Lord, a different Lord. What's not being defined here is what the Lord's name is. And we'll get way, get that down, down the road, down the road, we'll get that. So there's a Lord. After they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, there's, there's cherubims to say, you can't ever come back. They went and found another Lord, okay? And that Lord helped Adam and Eve conceive Cain, okay? And then again, Abel was there. And then here's the Lord. The Lord did this, and the Lord did that to Cain. The Lord did that, and so on and so forth. And and the and after Cain killed Abel, the punishment is greater than that, and presented that. And now we have Eden and Nod, and so we have the father, such in the tent, have cattle, Zilla, and so generations and generations is going. We're having family after family, and in verse 26, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, and began man, and then began man, or mankind, the family so far, to call upon the name of the Lord. So as Seth understood the Lord, and this is very important that I want you to understand. Let's go back to the top. Adam and Eve knew the Lord God in the Garden of Eden. When Cain and Abel came through, Cain and Abel didn't even know Lord God, but they knew the Lord. And when Seth came into the picture, Seth all he knew was the Lord. He didn't know the, uh, the Lord God, and he did not know God. Okay, so let's move fast forward now. In all of chapter uh, 4, chapter 5, this is the book of generations of uh, here. And, okay, so we're going to go, the Lord kind of made Seth. I'm just looking at my notes right quick. Okay, and then... So in chapter five, man and female, God created man and female, so on and so forth. And Adam lived and his likeness and his image and called him uh, named Seth. And after that, Seth has all, and we have Enos and begotten Cain. 
and canon and 60 and five years. We're talking about years and generations and generations. And then Enoch. So here it is. Enoch walked with God in verse 24. This is the first time in chapter five. The first time, again, the first time we're hearing someone walking with God. Enoch himself walked with God. He knew the Lord, but they were, he was also walking with God. And he was not, for God took him. And so Enoch, in this context, understood God. And he walked with God so closely that God took him. And that close relationship with Enoch and God, and they called his name Noah and the works and Ham became brown, which the Lord has cursed. Okay, so that's different. So now we have a Lord. And so here we have in chapter six, it came to pass. What came to pass? Enoch knowing God, and now there, there's a Lord. And then there is back again, God, and, and then all of a sudden, sons of God. Now, again, what is the sons of God? First John, this is a review again. Go back to the other lecture if you don't know. First John chapter 3, the Lord, God put us upon us, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, upon us uh, for us to be sons of God. And what is sons of God? Those who actually walk with God learn with God, okay? God, sons of God, okay, then the Lord says, my spirit will strive out of man. Okay, fine, G there's giants, okay? Man, the sons of God went out to the daughters, fine. God saw the witnesses. The Lord repented to God. Not the Lord God repented, but the Lord repented to God. He had made on this earth. He's going to destroy it. And so he found favor. So Noah found favor in the Lord, and then God looked upon the earth, and it was corrupted, and God said to Noah, so here's the thing that I want you to understand. Everyone in that I've heard in Christianity says the holiest one is Adam, which he is. He was born, created without sin. True. After Adam was kicked out of the garden, there was the Lord. And that Lord and God both had favor or likeness on one man in the earth at that time that was, in this context, evil, destruction. They were, there was nothing good. But Noah was found favor with God and man. So for us, the better position for us to be in keeping in line with 1 Corinthians the best position for us to be is to have favor with God and the Lord. Okay, so the, Noah came out of this in favor, and in the next chapter six, chapter six, uh, Noah found favor. Uh, chapter seven, okay, the Noah, we know that the Noah did according to what the Lord commanded him, and then the, the Lord wives, and then all of a sudden, the Noah's life, male and female, as God commanded Noah. So God, I mean, Noah was listening to the, the Lord. Noah was listening to God. And then all of a sudden, hell broke loose. The flood came and earth was on, earth, earth was destroyed. Okay, let's go into the next chapter real fast. Chapter eight, and God remembered Noah and then God came back and says, okay, that's enough water. Let's just take it down there and then all of a sudden Noah made in and let's go down and so now there are six days the earth there's dry land and all of a sudden they're dry land and uh let me look at my notes yep 20 and Noah built an ark unto the Lord even though God spoke to Noah in verse 15 God spoke unto Noah saying even though God spoke to Noah, Noah built an altar unto the Lord. Okay. And so every beast and all, okay, so the Lord smelled this to save the Lord on his heart and, and so on and so forth. Chapter 9, 
Look at this one. And God bless Noah and his sons and bless, be fruitful, multiply the earth. And that's what happened in, in chapter nine. That's what he's doing, all of these things. And so you can read all of this later. Uh, so he, from Noah, he's, he's doing this. And then Lord God, the Lord God of Shem, Shem became his servant, the Lord God's servant. And then all of that, next chapter. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's go back. 926. 926 to and 26. And he said, uh, said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Okay. Why is it say Lord God of Shem? We're talking about the Lord who is a God. Lord is a God of Shem. This Lord is now being divided up by the individuals. Okay. Again, <clears throat> after man was kicked out of the garden, all Cain, Abel, Seth, and all of the generations after Seth knew about is this Lord, and they made him a Lord, which is a Lord God. Okay, let's continue on. Next chapter, let's go to chapter 10. And, and all of a sudden, now they're doing mighty uh, and began to be mighty one in the earth, the hunter before the Lord. So he was a mighty hunter, hunter before the Lord. And so now the men are starting to become great again. Okay. They're starting to become great again. All right. That's families. Okay. Tongues in the land. Now, let's look in chapter 11. The whole earth was one language, one speech, okay? The bricks, and they said, build us a city of tower, reach the heavens, let us make us a name, lest we be scattered around the face of the whole earth. So in context, they knew they were going to be scattered, but they wanted to make themselves a name for themselves. Why did the Lord mess this up is because the idea is if I'm man and we can do it ourselves and become great ourselves, we don't need a Lord. That's the, that's the, that's the danger that the Lord and mankind was facing at this time. They knew they were going to be scattered, okay? scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. Let us be, make us name, name lest uh, we be scattered. Okay. They wanted to be something, someone, and the Lord wasn't going to have that. So the Lord, we're going to make different languages. We're going to take different, we're going to fuse their language and they not understand one another's speech and the Lord scattered them. And so here's the thing. In the Lord God in Genesis 2 and then 3, the Lord kicked out Cain, okay, kicked Cain out in 5, chapter 5. Cain went and it says right away he had a wife and there was a city. So what does that mean? Different lords, different areas, they were scattered everywhere, okay. Of, by the time we get into chapter 11 of Genesis, Moses is telling us that the scattered people came together under one accord and they wanted to make a name for themselves. Okay. The Lord scattered them, true, because that's what they knew they were going to do, but they also confused their language. Why is this important? Is because, let's look at Africa for an example. There are some tribes in Africa that has 10 different languages. They know 10 different languages. And if they had 10 different children and those 10 different children went out to the land, each child would not even know the other, even though they're blood relatives. The language confuses a lot of things. Okay. So here is now, again, here's the Lord, scattered the people, 
Now, what do we get out of chapter 11? What we get out of chapter 11 is where we get the different lords and gods. The profoundness of chapter 11 in the, Tao, the, the Babel position is when we all have different languages, we're going out and we're all asking for different lords. The lords are the ones who are giving us uh, the position of helping us. Now, let's co continue on and we'll sh we'll, we'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Now, the Lord has said unto uh, Abram, get then out of the country and the children and the land, and I will show you, I will make your great nations, I will pass thee, and the great names should be blessed, uh, and departed as the Lord spoken unto him. And Lot went to uh, with him, and Abram and Seventy, and Sarah, his wife, and they passed, and the Lord appeared before we move the mountains, and so on. So here's a Lord out of where? his country, Canaan. We know in Canaan had multiple gods. The difference of multiple, and them having multiple gods is because they had, well, there's two reasons. They had, man has a desire. And then the Lord has the gifts because the spirit comes out of them to give them that gift. Okay. One of the things, well, let me put it to you this way. In chapter 12 and the 13 and moving forward, we count Egypt. Why is, that, why is Egypt so important? Because Egypt is where the nucleus of everything is. And the reason Egypt is there in the nucleus of everything, in this keeping it in 1 Corinthians guidance, there are different lords for every desire that you may have. Now, for an example, if I say I'm in uh, the industry of uh, manufacturing, I need a Lord to help me with my business. If I'm in farming, I need a Lord to help me with that. Egypt it was the place to go and say, hey, if you are you needing a child and you're having difficulties with children, go to that God over that, go to that Lord over there. If you need something... Whatever you need, Egypt had it in this context now. Uh, and that's where we get different gods. We have different gods because, well, let's say, how does the Lord work? Now, if you get into uh, other arenas, we'll get into the idea that the Lord says, keep my commandments. And if you keep my commandments, good things are going to come out of this. If you break my commandments, Bad things are going to come out of this. Okay, so we know there that's an agreement. And if that is the agreement, and I am speaking one language, and I go to the Lord in my language, and the Lord and me have this close relationship because of what I need, why am I going to go to another Lord? I'm going to stick with this one Lord. Hence, when Moses comes along, there's a different Lord. Because that Lord says, keep my commandments. And we know his commandments. What is his commandments? The 10. What is the very first one? Have no other God before me. So there are other gods. And to be with Moses, Lord, who saved me out of Egypt, like within the lectures, go look at it. When this Lord kept uh, Egypt, I mean, kept Mo Moses and the, the slaves and got him out of Egypt, he said, keep my commandments. You keep my commandments, good things are going to happen. You don't keep my commandments, bad things are going to happen. Now, in context, what do I mean by this one particular Lord of Moses? Well, when it comes to Moses' Lord, unlike these other Lords, they were, they were doing some terrible things. And, and Sodom was wicked and sinners in verse 13. Men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, said, see, here is the thing. Is the Lord evil? No. See, the evilness was before or the wickedness was before the Lord. So the... 
So this context and this idea of the Lord, and I say to you, there's different lords for different administrations from farming to manufacturing to wanting to have a baby and like like uh, Cain and Abel after being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. In any area of you want a business, you want this, there's a different administration, there's a different lord, same ranking, different lord. Egypt was the very first place to express that. And the question is, if I say to you that this is the position, you're thinking your mind well, there's got to be evilness in there. No, it says the evilness, the sinners, the wicked and sinners was before the Lord. So let me give you an example uh, in this review of how I say there is no evil when it comes to spirituality. There is no evil. All things come out of God. And if God the creator is the light bringing it from the darkness, he said darkness from, and the light. He didn't say the darkness was evil because to say the darkness was evil is to say I created evil. No, he didn't create evil. He, he created spiritual beings, the, the, the universe. And what is evil is man. Man is the flesh. And this is what I said in the other chapter. Let me, let me stop sharing real fast because I don't think I need it. So if we understand the different uh, other chapter when we said that uh, the flesh, my spirit, the, I think it was in third, three or four, four or five, six, somewhere, six, six, six. <laughs> my spirit will not always be with man because of the flesh, that flesh. Flesh is what makes evil. So let me give you an, an example and an analogy, an example of what I mean by this position of the Lord and how it works in administrative position. I'm a boss. I have a business. My business is growing past myself and I need staff. That staff, and the relations between the staff and me, the owner, is a Lord position. I'm a Lord position. Now, don't get crazy. Just listen as the example. The Lord position is, I understand my staff is being with me, but it is not just them. They have families, and whatever they do with me, affects their families. I say as a Lord, I say to them, the staff, these are my commandments. This is my governing laws to be with me. If you follow them, good things are going to come to you. If you don't follow them, not so good things are going to come to you. And I know I need you to sacrifice now, again, this is where we get sacrifice in the business world. I need you to sacrifice for me so good things can come to you. And what happens is the evilness comes when the disobedience to, in the Lord's commandment, the daily bread. When you go against the commandments, Bad things happen. And that's not the fault of the Lord. That's the fault of you. Because you want something out of the Lord. The Lord says, I will give you whatever you ask for. Just follow this. Keep my commandments. If you don't, bad things are going to happen. So you follow the Lord's commandments and he gives you everything you want the administration, at least one of the administration size, and it grows, and you keep the commandment, and you grow because you keep the commandment, and that relationship between you and that Lord is good. 
There's two things that I want to bring out, and we'll get in more in depth when it comes to salvation lecture. And that is this. There's two things. The first one is there must be a sacrifice. In Moses' position, you cannot have no other God before me. That's a sacrifice. You cannot. If you want something out from me, I saved you. You want something out of me. You can't go to these other gods. Well, what if I need some money? What if I need healing? What if I need something that this Lord that says have no other Lord except for me can't provide me? That's a chance that you have to take. If you break those commandments, like, for example, uh, if you break the commandments, you'll get fired from a job. Illness comes upon you. I will curse you to your third and fourth generation. That is breaking the commandments. Now, the second part, that's the sacrifice. The second part is this. The Lord, well, let me put it to you this way. You have to understand the Lord is not, will not have a problem with you calling on the Lord and serving God. What does that mean? Noah. Noah listened to God, the creator. And Noah had favor and listened to the commandments of the Lord. And together, Noah, because of that favor and because of that obedience and because of that knowledgement, had the ghosts, had the teachings, had that ability to build it, had the resources to build it, had everything built into it, that is the best thing to have and be. So keeping the commandments and then understanding the creator God, the Lord won't have a problem with that. The problem with what I just said is this. If I go to the Lord, the Lord gives me a commandment. I know what the commandment is. I can keep it and we can have a good relationship. The problem with this is in Christianity, Jesus says, and we all know that's not his real name. Right? Jesus said, keep my commandments. What is Jesus' commandments? We know Moses' commandments came from the Lord. We know there's a verbal commandments coming from the actual spiritual world on the, on the activities through visions and dreams and so on. We know Jesus had commandments because Jesus said, keep my commandments. What is Jesus' commandments? And if you don't know what his commandments is, then how can you keep something? And if you don't keep it, then bad things are going to happen to you. Why are we still in poverty if you're trying to serve Jesus? Why are you still sick when you're trying to serve Jesus? Why is it that your families in your third and fourth generation has been doing the same thing, in the, in, not at the highest ability, I should say? The reason is, is because you don't know what the commandments are. And most, say, 99.9 .9 churches, uh, center of churches out there don't even know Jesus' commandments. And if you don't know his commandments, then how are you going to reap the benefit of it? And this, because of this, we go to other lords. Uh, and there's other lords has commandments. Keep these commandments. I, I will do this. But here's the problem with the Lord of Moses that I have an issue. I personally have an issue with. And that is this. 
this Lord that Moses was serving and worshiping said, follow me, keep my commandments. I will take you to a place that milk and honey is. And then I will give you that place where milk and honey is. Now, that's good, except for the fact that you got to kill those people, kill the men, the women, the children, kill them, and then you can take over what they had, the milk and honey. At the same time, this Lord says to the congregation, thou shalt not kill. So if you listen to me, among yourself, don't kill each other. Thou shalt not kill. But if you have a place where milk and honey is, go kill them and then take over their stuff. <laughs> you don't believe me. That's the same Lord Christianity, same Lord that a group of people came to this land over here and brought and look exactly what, what they've done in history. Somebody else built it. They went and killed them and then took it over like it was theirs. And that Lord is the same Lord that Jesus was following, or at least the King James Version says it. And that's the problem that I'm having with that one. I don't like that Lord. I like another type of Lord. And that Lord and I, we have a good relationship. And Jesus says, keep my commandments. Well, yes, I got your commandments. And then the Holy Ghost shall come. Yes, I, the Holy Ghost would teach me whatever the Lord Spirit gives me the gift of. And at the same time of all of that, I'm still serving the Creator God. And that Creator God and I have a good relations. The Lord and I have a good relations. And as long as I keep the commandments, I'm having a good relations with everything like Noah. That's the best that I can do, like Noah, to, to walk with God and to have a Lord that works with me and I work with it. That is the danger of Christianity, which is, I'm not harping on Christianity. I'm just saying it's not complete in its nature and it's not designed to be complete in its nature. Hence why you hear about these things. You're told to do these things. There's no instructions on how to do those things. So this is what this uh, uh, thing that I'm going and giving you uh, to help you down your path to serve God. Okay, in all of this, I'm looking at my notes right now. So we have to understand the Lord, no matter what Lord you go to, is not evil. Evil is not, the, the, the Lord is not, we, our desires are evil. Do I want money? And I don't care who the sacrifice must be. Uh, oh, sacrifice. Let's talk about that real fast. Like I said, we'll get more in depth with the, with the sacrifice. The sacrifice, how it works, is a blood sacrifice. Cain and Abel uh, gives us a good indication of that position. Why is it the blood sacrifice uh, that is so profound? Well, here's how it works. Okay, I go to the Lord. I say, I need something. I want something. The Lord says, okay, I, I can give you this. I, I can give you this, 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 and this. And if, you, if I give you this, make sure you keep and do this. Don't do this because if you go against what I said to do, I'm going to destroy you to the third and fourth generation, paraphrasing. And you say, okay, I agree. What is the, what is the contract? What is the deal? What is to seal it? It's a contract. It's a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. A blood sacrifice is a life for a life. That's one position of the blood. A life for a life. My life for this life seals the deal. Blood seals the deal. Just like in sexuality between man and woman, the, the virgin position. It's a covenant. 
It is a contract. Okay. The other type of uh, sacrifice, the blood sacrifice, is for sin. And we'll talk, like I said, sacrifice. When you cut the blood, because the blood is where life is, the blood sheds to, and then as it sheds my words, I confess out my sins. That sin goes and attaches itself to the blood, the life of that life, and that goes to the, cur the ground that is cursed. That's a sacrifice. That's a different type of sacrifice. So a sacrifice is I need a sacrifice to seal the deal from the Lord. Uh, that is not, that instruction is not there, okay? Um, so, yeah, so let's, let's go and, yeah, so let's now, I want to, I want to go share again, let me put my glasses on, because I, I hate seeing myself, first of all. <laughs> all right, so 1 Corinthians, let's go to 1 Corinthians, and we're going to look in 12. And we'll just jump there, go to four. Okay. So now, again, when Paul, when we're talking about Paul, Paul is very profound in spirituality. Remember, Paul is the guy when there was a guy in the window, third story fell, died. Paul goes out, raised the man from the dead. Jesus said, raise the man from the dead. Jesus said, heal the sick, cast out the devils, and so on and so forth. You can't do none of that spiritual work, meaning there is kings and priests. You can't be a priest and do what Jesus says for us to do on the master side of us, the spiritual side of us, without uh, an administrations of types of lords. You can't do it. It's impossible. So to have a gift of uh, healing, the gift of healing, I need a lord to give me the spirit, the gift of the knowledge and the gift of healing. I need that Lord to assist in that manner. And I need a relations with that Lord. And at the same time, I need the Lord to have favor with me and I need to walk with God. Okay. So the operations of it all is God. This is why the Lord will never get mad at you if you walk with God, the creator, you will have a problem with if the you put God above the Lord. Now, let me define that in a second. And, and Noah does it so, so easy. Noah came off of the dirt. Remember, Noah came in on dry land. What did Noah do? Noah created an altar for the Lord. And yet he still was listening and walking with God. It is funny how no one in the scriptures actually made an altar for the creator, God. They walk with God. They didn't put an altar to God. The altar was to the Lord. And that's the key to understand the, this relationship between lords and gods. I walk with God, the creator. I am a son of God, the creator. I also have a Lord, and the altar is designed to please the Lord and hoping that the Lord and myself have a relationship. And if you look at me and think, oh, that's terrible, you have a Lord and you have an altar, Go to church and find a church that doesn't have an altar and ask yourself what is being sacrificed on that altar and to whom that altar is giving itself to. Because Jesus never said, worship me. Jesus never asked for an altar. So the question is, what Lord are you worshiping, serving that has an, that has an altar? Churches have an altar. Uh, Judaism, temple has an altar. There's an altar because there has to be an altar if you're going to serve a Lord. The difference between your altar in a church and my altar for me is I know the commandments of my Lord. And that Lord gives me that spirit. Remember, the, the spirit, my, the Lord says, my spirit will not dwell with men because of that flesh position. 
so that spirit comes from that Lord, same spirit, the spirit is the gift from that Lord, and that Lord comes from God, the creator. So everything is wrapped up in one, the spirit, the Lord, and God. God is the creator of it all. The Lord represents a God, God's. The Lord represents the creator, and the spirit comes out of the Lord. And Noah says, build an altar to that Lord and walk with God. Now, if that Lord is a certain type of Lord versus a different type of Lord, there can be a different type of Lord. And we know the different types of Lords when we talk Job, for an example. When, when Job comes around, the, then there is the sons of God, and then there's a Lord, and then there's Satan. Remember I said, when you have a lore, you have an altar. And that altar needs to be serviced. If you do not obey the Lord, and if you do not walk with God, Satan is there to take you into the darkness. It is not the fact that he's evil. He is just simply going to take you into darkness. Okay, Satan is there to test you. Satan is there to do the will or to work with the Lord, to test the sons of God. It is not evil. It is there to test us. If it was evil, then why in Matthews, and I'm wrapping it up, no worries, why in Matthews chapter 4? After the baptism of Jesus was led up by of the Spirit, the Lord, the Spirit, God, the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You want to have a spirit, you want to have a gift, you want to serve a Lord. Where's your sacrifice? Prove to the Lord that you're worthy for him. Moses had a Lord, commandments. Keep the commandments. Noah had a Lord. Abram had a Lord. Jesus had a Lord. His name is Father. And we talked about that in a different lecture. The Lord is the Father. And Jesus had a Father, the Lord, and God. If you don't believe me, let me real fast. Uh, I'm sorry. Then, uh, Asia. Okay, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, begun dead, prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loves us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. God is the creator. It is the all thing. The Father is the Lord. You can't do what Jesus says without the administrations of the Lord. We know there's different types of lords. You need a Father, a Lord. At the same time, you need to walk with God. You need to be like a Noah. <laughs> and Noah... And Jesus has his sacrifice, his blood, his sacrifice, right? That's for the sin position. Uh, made us kings and priests unto God and his father. Uh, unto him glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Let me stop the sharing. So this this is the review. I hope I hope this brings out a better understanding, a deeper understanding. I hope we can move forward, and which is fine if we can need, if we need a pause again. But either way, um, so yeah, so that is understanding God the Creator, understanding the different uh, administrations, the Lord, the different types. Adam Adam and Eve had a Lord for Cain, Abel, and Seth. 
Um, from there, we had a different type of lore uh, from a uh, Noah, and then we have a different type of lore for Abraham, and we have a different type of lore for Moses, and so on and so on. There's always a Lord that Paul is teaching us we need. We need a Lord. And that Lord gives us a spirit, that gift. That's where the spirit, spiritual gifts come from. And at the same time, we put an altar to the Lord, as Noah gives us the example, and then we walk with God, the creator. So to be whole is the fact of everything within the lecture so far is the tree of knowledge. We need to understand closer and closer what is good, what is evil within ourselves. We, we also have the, the, um, the Holy Ghost. We also have the prayers. We also have commandments now. We also, so the question is, what do you want to do? What is it for you to do? You go out and you ask from the Lord, what is it that you want? Find the Lord who can provide that want, build an altar to that Lord, allow those commandments, the daily bread to come, follow those daily breads. And at the same time, we have uh, a creator, he who sits on the throne. We follow, walk with him, okay? And that's that's how it works. That's, that's the wholeness of Christianity, or it was supposed to be Christianity, but that's the wholeness of it all. And if you can do that, then great things are gonna come out of it if you understand the daily bread or know its commandments. And as long as if you follow it to the best of your ability, and if you cannot or you fall short of those commandments from that Lord, that's when we're gonna talk about next in our lecture, sacrifices, blood sacrifices or sacrifices for our sin. Sin is against the commandments and the law. All right, guys? All right. So I hope this helps bring a better understanding of this position and we can move closer and closer and closer to uh, a wonderful works that, that is coming for you. Um, and whenever I finish this, this lecture series, then, you know, let me know. And if you want more on how to deeper, deeper get into this, well, as they say, how, how deep down do you want to get into that rabbit hole? All right. All right, guys. This is Dr. Bagley. Thank you very much for joining me and spending your time with me. I will see you next time. And again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know and we'll continue on. All right, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye.